Though our Lord Jesus' message in our gospel today was mostly directed toward his apostles, as they would be the main thrust of his salvation, his evangelization, still his message is meant for all of us here today, all of us who are baptized, because we're supposed to continue the work of bringing others to Christ. So today, Jesus gives us two main images for us to become. The first image is where Jesus tells us, you are the salt of the earth. You know, for years and years, one of the best compliments you could give to another person was to tell them, you are the salt of the earth. For many of us here in modern times, salt is such a common thing. I mean, what's so great about salt? I mean, yeah, it makes french fries taste better, but how's that supposed to help us as Christians? Well, keep in mind that for centuries, and especially during the time of our Lord Jesus, salt was incredibly valuable. But did you know that half the time the Roman soldiers got paid sometimes in money, but sometimes they got paid in salt? One word that the ancient Greeks used to describe salt actually can be translated as divine. In fact, the Romans used to say there is nothing more useful than sun and salt. So during the time of our Lord Jesus, salt had three main qualities that can actually be transferred into making us better Christians and better disciples. First, salt was connected with purity. With salt being bright white, it's easy to see its connection with purity. That's why the Romans used to say that salt was the purest of all things because it came from the purest of all things, the sun and the sea. But for us, one of the ways that people should know us as Catholic Christians is because of our purity. Now, right away, people will tend to think that that can never be true. How can I be truly pure? And why do people get stuck in that kind of mentality? Because we are constantly being bombarded with teachings, ideas, images, messages that are anything but pure. It's all around us. But Jesus tells us in his teaching in the Beatitudes that blessed are the pure of heart for they shall see God. That's very important because you're, if you're able to see God, pick up on his inspirations, see his guidance, receive his protection, especially for your thoughts and for your desires, then you indeed will be able to be pure by having purity of intention in everything you do. By being the salt of the earth, you will be the honest one. You will be the moral one. You will be the upright one, the one who truly brings the presence of Jesus into all that you do. And you will have purity of intention in that everything you think, say, or do is for the glory of God. The second connection with salt in the ancient people is that it was an extremely valuable preservative. Salt was used for food to keep it from going bad, from spoiling. Because back in the day, without refrigeration, salt was used to keep meat and fish from going bad, or another way of putting that, from becoming corrupt. We're called by our Lord Jesus to be the people who keep others from going bad, from being corrupt. Now, for some of us, we are the ones doing the corrupting. We're not exactly the ones helping others to stay pure and holy. But are we not the ones who are baptized? Aren't we the ones who receive Jesus every week in Holy Communion? Are we not the ones who have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, a heartbeat away, and the love of the Father? Then we have to do what we're destined to do, to be that salt that prevents others from going bad, from falling into the ways of the world. So whether that is through prayer, through encouragement, to presenting the truth to others in the spirit of love, that is what we're called to do by our Lord. Next, salt brings flavor to things. Now this aspect of salt is what we're most familiar with, how salt can spice of food that would otherwise be quite bland. Now obviously, too much salt can ruin food, but the right amount makes all the difference. So we are to take what the Lord gives us his presence, his peace, his love, his joy, his blessings, and make all of that ours, and then get out there and spice up the world, especially when it comes to the joy of being a Christian. We have to let the world see that. 
Now, true, us Catholics, we know how to suffer. We know how to fast. We know how to give things up for the sake of Jesus and the church. We know how to wear ashes. We should also know how to wear the crown of glory and be the people who actually look like we're being saved. Like for example, after this Mass, how many of you might go to the various restaurants around town? Okay. Are they, are they looking forward to seeing you? Oh man, here come the Catholics, man. It's going to be awesome. These guys are great. Or are they going, oh no, here come the Catholics, man, all right? <laughs> we have to be the joyful ones. We have to be. In this way especially, you'll be very effective in being the salt of the earth. And if you're not joyful, what do you got to do? Give all of your cares, your worries, your frustrations, your hurt to the Lord, like right now at this Mass, part of your offering, and then receive His heart. Because once you receive God's love and realize how much He loves you, you can't help but be joyful. But Lord Jesus, He doesn't stop there. He gives us next what could very well be described as the greatest compliment He could ever give to one of us. Jesus says in John chapter 9, verse 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus indeed is the light of God, he's the light of the world. But he tells us that we can be that light, the very light of God, that's who we can be. And the light that Jesus gives is not meant to be hidden. As he tells us, a city put up there on a mountain, up there on a hill, can't, can't, be, can't be hidden, can't hide that. We don't light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. So when Jesus says these things, what is he meaning for us to know? First of all, we've got to go back, place ourselves back in his time, the time of Christ. Back then, of course, there was no street lights, no indoor light bulbs to light things up. And family houses back then usually only had one little small window in them. And all they had for light were little handheld oil lamps. If the flame went out in those lamps back in those days, you're dealing with some serious darkness. So a lamp was very valuable back then. It was the only source of light during the nighttime hours. And this was a light that was meant to be seen. Our Christianity is something that is meant to be seen. But some people show their Christianity, their Catholic faith, only when they are physically here at Mass. Well, here in this space, they're prayerful, they're joyful, they're so holy, they're, they're making the angels cry. But then there's their guardian angel going, Shh, don't let that person fool you. As soon as they go back into the parking lot, won't be able to tell them apart from the entire rest of the world. As Christians, you should be bringing the light of Christ to your schools. Oh, schools are such a mess. Bring the light. How about your workplaces? Oh, they're so secular. Bring the light to the ball games. And most importantly, it's the most difficult to your families. As a theologian, William Barclay once said, Jesus did not say, you are the light of the church, but rather, you are the light of the world. That light is supposed to be seen everywhere. There are two other images, though, we can take from our being the light of Jesus in this world. First, Light can be a great guide, whether it be the bright beams coming from a lighthouse warning a ship about a rocky shoreline, or a street light that tells you, no, we're not lost, we're good on a nighttime drive. We're called to guide people to make the way to Jesus clear. I have to under understand something, though. This is where many of you can step up. There are plenty of people in this world who do not have the moral strength or the courage to take a stand by themselves. But if someone shows them the way, if they have someone to follow, someone who's full of light, then that person will end up doing the right things. You are that light. Now don't be sitting there thinking, no, my life is more in darkness. It's not in light. How can I possibly be the light of Christ? It's a good question. But man, what an easy answer. If your darkness is because of your sin, you go to confession. 
that clears the way for everything holy. If your darkness is from unforgiveness, or bitterness, or anger, or disappointment, or low self-esteem, well, you guys know what to do. You take up and place all of those heaviness, all that junk, and put it on that altar. Then the angels will take it up to heaven, so God can disperse that, get, get rid of it for you. And then when Jesus comes down in Holy Communion, and you hear those words, the body of Christ, you say amen, you're about to receive not just the life of Jesus, but the light of Jesus. You're good to go. Man, I've said this a hundred times man, for the confirmation students. After receiving Holy Communion, I should be passing out sunglasses, man. Whoa, okay. You got the light within you. But finally, a good, reliable light can also be used as a warning. A warning light. A light is often used as a warning that there is danger ahead. We can be that type of light for others, warning them when their lives are going the wrong direction. Now, don't be afraid of being the one to warn others about their lives. Yes, we all know it's a bit risky, especially when it comes to family members, because there's always a chance they will cut you off because they'll get all mad at you because they think that they're doing nothing wrong. But if your warnings are given because you're radiating the very light of Jesus himself to others, not in anger, not in irritation, not in sharp criticism, especially not in condemnation, but in true love, true concern for the other, you will be very effective. So be courageous, be bold. You, you have the light. So the light that can be seen, the light that guides, the light that warns, are all the lights of the Christian life that we are supposed to shine forth with. So receive, be wide open to receive the fullness of our Lord today and every day, and be that salt of the earth, be the light of the world. You will come to discover your life as a Catholic be greatly fulfilled.